Hey, Slick Talkers, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast, and I know that if you love this show, you'll also love my morning show called Good Morning Hospitality with my co-hosts Michael Golden and Brandy Canale as we spend 30 minutes every Monday morning to dive into the industry's top latest news and trending topics. So go check it out on wherever you find your podcasts at Good Morning Hospitality, and you can live stream with us on Monday mornings on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Now, I hope you enjoy this episode. So I am a travel fanatic, and I've always wanted to experience certain things that I couldn't experience at home. And so for me, it was about how could I help businesses create the experiences that I dream of doing and help people all over the world experience that so in a different way as well. Welcome to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast where we discuss all things hospitality, hotels, and business. You can find us online at slicktalkthepodcast.com and on every podcast listening platform. As I've been growing my business and finding new ways to add to my property portfolio, I have to think about how I can anticipate the homeowner's needs, just like I do for my guests. One of the things owners always ask is, how is my property going to be protected? What happens if something gets damaged or worse? These are valid questions and concerns, and I have an opportunity to address these concerns before they even get mentioned, all thanks to having Safely as part of my toolkit. I can ensure all stakeholders are covered during a guest stay and use this information as a way to grow my business by ensuring my property owners know they can trust that I have them covered. If you're a professional property manager, then you need to get safely in your tool belt so you can focus on operating and growing your business. Thanks for listening to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. Now, back to an episode. All right, everybody, welcome back to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. And again, I'm your host, Will Slickers, and today is another amazing episode. We have an amazing guest on the show, Samantha. I would love to just have you uh, kind of introduce yourself to the audience here today, and then we'll dive into your story. So tell us who you are and what you do. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I've been listening for a while now, and I love all the guests you bring on and and the various perspectives they bring. So I hope to bring a fresh one today. Uh, So I am the founder of A More Social and The Storied Experience. And I started A More Social uh, almost 10 years ago (laughs) to this month. And uh, I was in social media marketing and I was working with a lot of different kinds of businesses. But one of my first clients was a hotel and it was a boutique hotel, very historic and just working with them over the years really opened my eyes up to what the hotel experience could be, what the hotel, like the potentiality within it. And, you know, as I was going through my journey of social media marketing, I realized that there was so much of a story that wasn't being told in the offline experience. So, you know, me here with my social media marketing business, very much immersed into the online world. And I saw like, I really wanted to explore what the offline journey really looked like and making sure that those two connect in a really nice way so that they're not disjointed and not creating expectations that are going to mislead the traveler or the guest. Well, that's actually a great answer because I was just going to ask you from creating a social media marketing agency and you know, taking in this like, guest experience aspect for the hotel that you brought on uh, as a client, did you see a big difference in the actual, like the social media experience that you're creating and then the actual in-person real life experience? And is that what kind of drove you to to shift that? Absolutely. I mean, as a traveler, I've seen this a lot. Uh, with, with the clients I work with, I see this a lot. And so there's this I call it like the experience gap where, you know, there's this perception of, of what is, you know, the picture being painted online is is drastically different than what they're actually getting in the offline experience. And so uh, I was traveling a few years ago and that happened to me. Like I I booked a hotel because of the picture they were painting on their online experience. And when I got there, it was completely different. And 
So as a frustrated guest, I saw a major opportunity to study the guest experience, what makes it remarkable, what makes it worth booking, and then to be able to distill that down and make it accessible for people to understand. Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions these days about what makes a great experience. Like sometimes I get emails, it's like all about the guest experience. And then it's all about technology and like all these things that, you know, as a guest, like I'm not coming away from a trip, like marveling over the technology of a hotel. So, you know, I I think that there's a necessary perspective shift that needs to happen for everyone in the industry to get on the same page about what it is. 100%. And I was going to even say like, I've had multiple times, especially for hotels that wanted to be on the show earlier on, like when I created the show and all this other stuff, it was like, oh my gosh, your social media is crushing it. And one thing that we've talked about a lot is the the anticipation of you know sharing that experience, right? So I'm anticipating a great stay. I booked my property or my, my vacation a month in advance or two months in advance, whatever. Now I've built up this kind of, I guess, false expectation based off of what I saw, right? Which is good. Like we mm-hmm. want our guests to it's not good that we create a false expectation, but we create an image in their head of what can happen. What can we create? What moments can, can be formed in this property and this, this time. Um, and so for, for you, I'm curious to see like, what were those, I guess, what did you change differently with how you worked with clients or how you created that, that I guess real expectation of the guest experience and the journey that they're going to have. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of what we we do today, and so the storied experience actually launched right before COVID, which was really tough. Um, because you, of, I was gonna say, can you describe what the storied experience is? Yes. So the, so after being in business with a more social for ten years, and wanting to move into the offline experience and guest des- experience design. Uh, you know, I, I started researching about what it entailed. I took an online course with Cornell's Hotel School, uh, and that really set me off on a very long journey of studying the guest experience on many levels. And so at the end of the day, what the storied experience is, is more of the experience design element of the marketing of of the hotel experience. So it's really more about how can we create a unique concept that differentiates us from all the other hotels out there. How are we creating programming and activities that aren't the standard expected experience that so many travelers can get at any hotel now? I mean, like we're starting to see hotels, they're they're definitely doing a good job of evolving into the space of, you know, essentially giving people a taste of the local culture. Um, But you know, there's once there's always a baseline. So like once you start doing that, you have to keep raising the bar. And so how do you do that? And that's really tough. And, you know, sometimes it can take resources that I think are hard for hotels to wrap their heads around. And it includes a lot of collaboration and things like that. So, um, you know, we really help hotels make sure that They're not just create like, so for example, they're not just creating a picnic experience, but they're creating a picnic experience that has personality and has culture infused in it and also considers the guest well-being. So like all of these things have to come together. So, um, you know, I studied so many things along the lines of storytelling and travel behavior and positive psychology and aesthetic intelligence. Like, so I really wasn't just, um, you know, I didn't have my blinders on specifically to the hotel industry while I was studying all of this. And I think that really helped because it, it does bring a more comprehensive viewpoint on what the experience could be like. What other areas did you look at for, for, I guess, inspiration as you're going through this, instead of just focusing on hotels, were you looking at airlines? Were you looking at other industries that weren't even hospitality? Like what was that? Uh, yeah. Guess, well, like, viewpoint? So it's interesting. Um, my background, I have a lot of diverse experience. Like I've worked with antique markets. I've worked with jewelry designers. I've worked with like all kinds of businesses over the last 10 years. And so I kind of take from everything because that's essentially what hospitality is in a nutshell is like a a culmination of everything in a culture coming together in one point where you can experience it with your senses and really immerse yourself and engage your curiosities and imagination in all kinds of ways, right? It's not just about the food and beverage, like that's so we might like that's what we think of a lot of times when we think of hospitality, like entertainment. But like 
there's art, there's design, there's like so many other elements that I think often get put on the back burner. So yeah, I, I really pulled <laughs> from all my resources. Like I have a 800 page compendium of symbolism, like a book on symbolism and all the different kinds of symbols that, you know, symbols play into storytelling. And I think there's just like, there's always something that can be integrated from other industries. And, you know, a book that kind of inspired me along the way was the Blue Ocean Shift or Blue Ocean Strategy that I'm sure, you know, you and a lot of people listening are familiar with this idea that, you know, if you are only looking within your industry, you know, you have your blinders on, you're missing out on a world of opportunity. 100%. Yeah, there's a lot of times that even the best innovations in our industry have been from inspirations of the outside, you know, changes happening, you know, with everyday retail or like not that retail is not a part of hospitality, but if you look at the retail shopping experience and how that really shifted Airbnb kind of copying the Amazon uh, model, whereas click, click, bot, like, boom, you don't have to worry about it. No entering information every time. No this, no that. It's as simple as that. So I think Mm -hmm. that's 100% true. That's really interesting. Um, so what are, so you kind of mentioned COVID a little bit and we've gotten, I finally feel like in this part of the year, 2021 that, you know, we're finally like, I've seen the podcast shift away from like, we haven't talked about this COVID as much as we did in the beginning half. And I was like, Oh yes, we're finally doing it. But, uh, it's kind of one of those things you, you, uh, can't avoid. So I want to know (laughs) for you, uh, with this, you know, whole pandemic happening, uh, what was, I guess your initial response or what happened kind of in that time with uh, the shift in how, how you plan marketing and, and this guest experience, because obviously everything shifted. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I can't avoid the topic. So as a social media marketing agency, a lot of our clients had to shut down. And so we did pull back on the content creation and eventually things started coming back. But for me, I spent a lot of my time researching even more. Like just, I I created a course, an educational platform for people to learn about these sorts of concepts. And I I took the time really to just go inward and, and reflect on what exactly it is that I I want to bring to the world. And uh, well-being became a really strong part of that. Uh, I personally, believe that tra- like a travel experience can be life-changing. I believe that these experiences that we have when we're out exploring the world can become a catalyst for big changes in our life. And so I wanted, when everything started coming back, like I wanted that to be a major cornerstone of my work and the things that I do to help hotels. So I spent a ton of time researching well-being. And you know, I, I think our industry has a uh, a narrow viewpoint on what wellness and well-being essentially can be. And I, I think there's a lot of potential there, for especially like, so for example, I, I have this quote, um, this statistic that says nearly, this is from Skift, and they say nearly 75% of respondents reported a growing interest in wellness-related travel experiences with the highest overall interest being mental well-being and gaining a new perspective on the world. So, you know, I think when we hear wellness, we think a lot of times, like, I don't know what you think of, but I think of smoothies, yoga, uh, thinking, mindfulness, yeah. right? You yeah. too, right? <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking yoga, especially the ones with the baby goats jump on your back. <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. And I totally want to do that. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, that's not what wellness is all about, right? Like, wellness is so much more well-being is more in- all-encompassing. And it, the statistic shows that, it's not really the physical form of wellness that people are interested in. It's the mental well-being, the gaining a new perspective of the world. You don't, you don't gain a new, maybe you do, but I don't think you really gain a new perspective of the world from just from drinking a smoothie or from, you know, having a yoga class. So it's really asking these questions of, especially now when people are coming out of this pandemic, like with Matt carrying massive trauma, how can we help them? move their life along? Like what, what type of experiences can people have that are going to have a ripple effect and actually, you know, get people out of this stuck state because, you know, a lot of people are going to be stuck here for a while. Like these things don't just disappear. These things take a toll on, on our physical and mental well-being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think a big, like obviously the obvious reason for that seven, what 76% you said. 
Yes. Yeah, so so 75. 75. Yeah. So the obvious reason for that is like you have over 18 months of people being locked in or regulated on where they can go. Like my friends in Australia are still stuck at home going through massive yeah. you know, lockdowns because there's one case or whatever it may be. And uh, that takes a lot on the mental health like that, mm-hmm. especially when other parts of the world are open and then oh, you're yes. seeing people live and go back to normal, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But that, that's a big part of it. And I think, um, you know, I'm I always kind of feel like cliche bringing up the drive to destination. But I feel like for us in America, the the classic American family road trip, whatever your family may look like, um, is back in the sense because of that was all we really had, because you can't go to Europe, you can't go to England, you can't go to this, you can't go to that um, other than Mexico for a short time being without any restrictions like that was it. You had you had to drive, you know, three to five hours and experience something yeah. different in your backyard. So, I think the uh, what the wellness part, and I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of people do bring up, you know, smoothies, yoga, healthy living, eating type deal. But um, for you guys, what are you when you're kind of going through the stuff with your clients or even thinking about wellness marketing? What's uh, a good go to? I guess tool, resource, whatever you guys are, are doing, what, what do you use or what do you aim for? Yeah. So we, we really rely on positive psychology and positive design, which are the, the concepts behind these ideas is that well-being is a part of something holistic. It's, it's really like anything could be a well-being experience. Art can be therapeutic. Food can be therapeutic. Like literally anything has the potential and that we shouldn't like lock people into these very specific, uh, you know, traveler profiles and only target them because, of course, everyone needs well-being. Everyone needs an experience that's going to make them feel good and flourish. And so it's really about looking at the property, looking at, you know, what their unique positioning is what their competitive edge is and say, okay, well, you know, this is where you're going and we want to make sure that there's well-being integrated into it. And we want to make sure that it's, it's done in like, so one of the questions I got, I did a workshop on this recently and someone said, doesn't fun and excitement sell better than well-being. And I, I say the two are not mutually exclusive. Like it needs to be fun and it needs to cater to someone's well-being. Like you, at this point in the game, especially with everything that's going on in the world, like I would have told you this years ago, but especially now, like these two things need to coincide together. And so that's why it's so important to, to know, you know, your unique way of bringing well-being to the guests. Like, again, back to putting blinders on, this is a time you do want to put your blinders on and stop looking at what the rest of the industry is doing in terms of well-being and wellness, because they have a very limited, limited perspective. And they're, they're only doing it, they're only seeing it in terms of the wellness, typical cliche perspective that unfortunately doesn't appeal to the masses. And I do think this is a way to appeal more to a wide variety of travelers and deliver more value because, you know, when you look at hospitality, you've, you've got like entertainment, which is almost at like the bottom rung of the value level. Like entertainment is people can get it anywhere. Yeah, it's easy. Um, it doesn't require much engagement. It, it's so like that's the lowest rung of value. And then well-being is actually above that. So if you if you want to create an experience that is more valuable to your guests, well-being is really the answer, in, in my opinion. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. And I wanted to drop in quickly to let you know that our partners at Jetstream have some of the best in class technology that sits at the heart of the guest experience with a focus on generating revenue for your property assets. With their platform, your property gets the best in class tech and integrations to remote access, guest screening, booking protection, and payment processing. Better yet, their team does all of the hard work of 24 7 guest communication and content creation. So go ahead, click the link in the show notes so you can jump on board today and take advantage of their professional hospitality team. Now, we're back to the episode. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think it goes into a lot of the, like, 
I don't know, you, you talked about the, you know, the masses of what the hotels are doing. A lot of them are, you know, saying well-being is this, this is what we're doing to assist well-being or, or to make this experience. Um, and it more like it kind of copies that spa feel like, you know, mm-hmm. they, they always kind of show, you know, well-being with uh, some someone laying down the ava or are they avocado, not avocados, cucumbers over their eyes, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. You know, like the very like the mud mask and like that's well-being. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of it, too, like if you look at the uniqueness in the hotel space and the vacation rental space, a lot of our messaging or marketing is towards like personal ambition or personal drive. Like, you know, you may have a, a founder or operator whose well-being opinion is that they have the best local eco-friendly grown coffee that you could ever find. And that is what brings, you know, a serenity to their their destination in the sense of, Waking up, looking out the pasture, having a cup mm-hmm. of coffee, peace and quiet, nothing to distract you, get away, yeah. type deal. Um, and so it's mm-hmm. so it's so pushed into our like our own personal belief that I think like you were talking about, the uniqueness is so important because a lot of the times we try to put on this like and I, I love Marriott, but like we put on this Marriott or Hilton brand or whatever that, yeah. you know, is very not generic, but is very broad spread out in the sense of uniqueness. Uh, versus mm-hmm. where like you really show your true colors, uh, whether like your I have an amazing uh, friend out in in Italy, like they literally have like gardens where their guests can go pick out stuff for dinner and like do this stuff and bake their their dinner with them and have this like local fresh wine and yes. this like eco friendly everything and uh, and it's telling their story is because that's why, why they move there themselves you know and so uh, I think that's more needs to be more captured kind of what you're talking about. Exactly. And what you touch on is a very important part of the experience design process. And so I actually did a blog post on this recently that people I highly recommend checking out because it has an important visual. Um, This was from the experience economy. And it's this idea that you've got different levels of absorption and immersion, immersion, sorry, And you've got passive participation and active participation. And so entertainment falls in this quadrant of passive absorption. It doesn't require any um, input or any engagement really from the guest. And yet, you know, when a lot of people think of hospitality, they think of entertainment. But really the sweet spot is to get like right in the middle, very balanced between entertainment and then on the opposite side of the spectrum is education and escapist. So you're kind of giving people more hands-on opportunity to engage, to, to be curious and not just watch something and not just like see something playing out. Like they actually get to be, play a role in it and be a part of it. And again, when you talk about value, that makes something so much more valuable because really like, it helps them create their own stories. And, you know, when we talk about storytelling and hospitality, you know, I think a lot of hotels start to think like, oh, I need to tell my story. I need to, you know, the story needs to be about us. Well, really the story spotlight needs to be on the guest, their journey. It's their story. You're just playing a role in it. And essentially is what it's all about. So when you kind of shift your perspective on storytelling and focus on, making sure that the story that's playing out is like actually the story that they're going to be immersed into. That's when it becomes ultra valuable because, you know, if you've ever heard someone talk about themselves all day long, you'll understand how old and boring that can be. No, I totally, I totally know what you mean. And it it kind of comes back (laughs) to something that uh, like in the beginning of COVID, I realized a lot of companies started doing whether they were operators or tech providers or whatever they were always like this is what we're doing this is what, like how, how we're helping this is what we're doing blah 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 and like they're always like and granted like it's fine I, I think it's always good to showcase good work and and so but like that's all you would see in the headlines the same companies doing great things blah 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 and then for for us we were like all right how do we focus instead of saying hey this is how we're pivoting this is how we have shifted this is how we have saved our business and whatever it may be uh why don't we just highlight all those who aren't doing that, Mm -hmm. who aren't promoting themselves, who aren't telling their story in a, in a way that it it deserves really having that spotlight. And we realized quickly after we, we created this award 
And it was for those people that just weren't telling, telling the story. They were putting their head down. They were doing their good work. They were they're going for it. They're just doing them yeah. in the sense of serving their guests, their owners, their, you know, whatever, maybe their teams. And we realized within a day we had over 60 nominations for this award of people that were nominating their friends that weren't shouting from the rooftops their story. And then all of a sudden you have 60 nominations of amazing stories of people that just truly value, you know, the uniqueness of themselves, of their guests, of their their work in the sense of a different area where they're not always kind of like you said, being old and talking about themselves 24 seven and getting really tiring. Uh, and so it, it, it's a unique shift, like the engagement you would have gotten from showcasing others versus showcasing yourself is like a night and day difference. Yes. I love that. I think that's so cool that you did that. And yeah, I think there are a lot of people who don't tell their story because they, they sense that, like they get that, like perhaps maybe it's not the story they need to be telling, but they don't know the story that they do need to be telling. And it, so storytelling is just a really interesting thing that I think a lot of people, um, you know, once it, once marketing gets its hands on something <laughs> tends to ruin it. Um, <laughs> but really it's, it's about the, the story that the journey that's playing out for your guests. Mm-hmm. And so one of those, you just brought up Airbnb earlier, I think. And, they they actually use storyboarding to kind of map out their guest experience, you know, their experience for their users. And I've always been a huge fan of using storyboarding to kind of recognize what the different aspects of a journey are and making sure that there are the the sensory details that are are in every single moment. You know, we so I find that storyboarding is the the perfect tool to kind of walk through your guest experience and say, okay, uh, what are people seeing right now? What are they smelling? What are they hearing? What are they tasting? What are they feeling? Uh, You know, where are they at in their own personal journey that we want to take them one step further? And what is that end destination? Um, You know, I've done, I've worked with the Transformational Travel Council who is all about this. And I, I think they do an amazing job of encouraging people to think about travel and hospitality as, as a more than just like a sightseeing experience, more than just, you know, R and R relaxation, restoration, entertainment. It, it's really like each trip. And I said this at the beginning, it has the potential to take someone further beyond where they're at. And so I, I think I truly believe that hotels can play a major role in that if they stop looking at things purely as just entertainment value, because again, like entertainment value is the lowest of everything. And of course there are always going to be travelers who just need to unplug, just need to be amused for a few days. But at the end of the day, we have to, and I I love this quote recently. I just saw this morning from design hotels is why we make a journey is as important as how. So we as an industry have to be asking, why are people in such immense need of relaxation and entertainment? Like what's going on in their lives that they're trying to escape from so desperately that they can't handle? And how can we help them just even make a little progress towards remedying that? And like, so like maybe someone has just become completely disconnected from their purpose like that was a huge thing this past year. Like everyone's questioning, what am I doing about in my life? So like, that's one thing that, you know, a, a travel experience can absolutely help address. Um, connection, like people are feeling disconnected from both their loved ones and just society in general. Hospi- that's a huge problem that hospitality can solve. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, like we have to acknowledge that, yeah, it's going to take a bit more work. It's going to take a bit more thoughtfulness. But it's so much more worth it. And that's how we change travel. We change it in the hospitality world first Mm -hmm. because, you know, we're the ones that impact the traveler. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. I love that. I think uh, a lot of the times is that we we limit ourselves, whether it's a vacation rental, hotel, even a restaurant, that we think we can only impact our guests, our customers, whatever you want to call them, um, on property. I've seen amazing stories of people – and, and just companies that have that deep, like it's a, it's a very intentional thing, but they don't mm-hmm. look at it as, okay, we can only impact you during your stay. We can't impact mm-hmm. you pre, pre-arrival. We can't check you post-checkout. We can't impact you vice versa in any other way or form. 
And that's so, so false. If you really focus on that connection aspect, I think you, you just briefly touched on. And yeah, like that's the one thing that like we're trying to connect people and we're trying to streamline with tech. And like, I love all these conversations that we're having in the industry. It's like really great. But at the end of the day, if we forget that, you know, we, we don't need to limit the connection piece, which is really just being a true human, just saying, mm-hmm. hey, Samantha, like, I know you had a little bit of stress getting to the airport on your way out. Uh, we know you had a great stay from what you left on your review, if you left one. Um, but hey, you know, we uh, we saw on your room bill that you you dine at a restaurant. Here's a twenty five dollar gift card for whenever you come back, and we can't wait for you to to return. Like something impactful right out the gate, post checkout. Like something that you can carry with at home. And guess what? You're at home just anticipating that experience again and again and again and again. And so yeah. Sorry, we can geek out for for a while, but yeah, it just gets me all it gets me all pumped up. I know, I know. There's like endless, like, and that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of times people get overloaded with all the creative different routes they can take, mm-hmm. and that's why it's so important to again know your values, know your personality, and 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 make sure that that's always underlying the experience because. Yeah, you can go chasing so many different shiny objects yeah. in this industry. And at the end of the day, like, it's about knowing your guest and what they actually care about. Because, for example, if I was to send someone like a gift card to dine in, but like, that's not what they're there for, mm-hmm. then I've missed an opportunity to really actually connect with them and bring them back for something meaningful. And so, yeah, I think that we have to keep this top of mind, like not assuming that everyone likes to travel the way we travel. And that's the thing I always have to do too. Like I have to, I have to check myself and say like, not everyone wants a meaningful experience. Some, again, some people do want that really, you know, relaxation and they need it, but we we are definitely shifting towards this more meaningful travel. And it's so funny. I was reading and a report, I love like diving deep into like 50 page, like societal reports on, on travel behavior from like, I was just reading one from like 30 years ago, Wow! but it doesn't change. Like the way he's talking about like isolation and alienation and, and these people who, you know, these types of travelers who go out to experience other cultures because they're seeking a new way of life. Like that is still a major reason why people travel. So it's like, I, you know, it's just crazy to think that we've we've had this information, these resources for decades, and yet we're still doing things the same way. Yeah. And I, you know, I think I think it is time. You know, we're seeing again mentioning design hotels. They have this concept of the promatic traveler that they're really pushing, and like there's just these different kinds of acknowledgement. I think we're finally at a place where we're acknowledging that travelers are craving something a little bit different and a little bit deeper. Yeah. The more we can take away friction and the more we can, like, I think situational awareness is really key. Mm. As as a front desk agent, when I first started, I realized I had more success with repeat guests and, and check-ins or checkouts based off of being aware, not just processing, all right, photo ID, credit card, blah, 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 going through the steps, right? Like, being aware that, okay, like every time this guest is checked in, you know, bu- being a busy convention hotel is like, all right, he books with his visa, but he uses his Amex when he gets there. Like he switches. So like mm-hmm. how, like what are like just situational awareness and then bringing it up and like making it aware that they know you're aware. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, it's just, I don't know. I've, I've figured out that when the more, I guess, situational awareness or reading the room, whatever that may be, um, the more intimate and intentional the conversations were and guess what to this day i've not worked at that hotel in like seven years and i still talk to him on a mo- almost monthly basis so it's like you wow. just like creating those connections and simple matter forms i think a lot of people like it's a lost art almost in the sense of oh, the way 100 percent yeah covet has been and it's kind of like messed up that whole 100 percent. yeah like yeah. i think when you say that like to me that reads as like emotional intelligence when like understanding what people are feeling, thinking, mm-hmm. uh, why they're doing the things that they're doing. Like that should always be top of mind yeah. in, in the industry. 100%. Sure. Well, sweet. I, I, uh, I think we can geek out forever and ever and ever, but <laughs> I want the listeners to be able to have access to more of the content that you've been providing. You mentioned your blog, you mentioned 
um, some other workshops and everything else. So where can people find you? What's the best place to go? And of course, as everyone knows in the audience that everything's in the show notes. So just read, scroll, click, and boom, you're there. So, uh, but I'll let you do a shameless plug. Awesome. Well, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd love for people to go check out the free resources I have on the storied experience.com. Uh, there's a ton of interesting articles, uh, free workshop on well-being, and I do have a course called the Spark Five Star Success Pathway that is all about everything we've talked about. Like we cover everything from culture, well-being, personality, positioning, all of it, uh, and it's just really uh, information-packed. So there's there's tons of resources out there, and uh, you can. I always love connecting with people on LinkedIn and Instagram, where you can find me there as well. Yeah, and I think that's where we connected. We connected on Clubhouse and then Instagram. I think how it went, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Well, awesome. Well, you heard it here, Slick Talkers. You can find everything in the show notes. Go ahead, check it out, and we will see you again next week. Thank you so much for listening. We love your support and want to provide the best we can to all our listeners. So please find us online, social media, and on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. Smart locks, smart thermostats, automation, and a solution for any hotel and vacation rental company. Our show partners at Operto are the leading solution for operators to enhance their operations by integrating with your property management software and making sure that all your smart devices create a contactless guest experience while streamlining your operations. So don't forget to check them out on their website, send me a message, or just let them know that we'll send you and you are in good hands. So get ready to enjoy another episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast and check out operto.com or go to the podcast website and see our partners page. What's up, everybody? If you've gotten this far into the episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast, then you are amazing. And thank you so much for tuning in. We want to send you two places really quickly. If you can, check out the show notes and click the hospitality.fm link. Check out all of our other shows on the podcast network. And don't forget, if you have someone that you want to hear on the podcast, then fill out the guest fill out form so that way we can get them on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy another episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast.